Um, it's my pleasure this evening to, to speak to you about the Healthy Start program. You may find over this next 45 minutes or so that I get a little bit passionate about the subject. Uh, I'm often known to rant on for <laughs> minutes and hours sometimes about Healthy Start. Um, my uh, fellow faculty members tease me that if, if I'm in an Uber on my way to a lecture, hope and pray that the Uber driver doesn't ask me why I'm there because I'll begin my dissertation about Healthy Start and I may not stop. And why is that? Because at this point in my career of 38 years in dentistry, I have found this to be one of the most compelling and amazing and successful treatments. And, and the, you know, my whole career has been about helping. And this is something that I found to be so exciting and so amazing. I'm able to help so many children. We, uh, we look at treating children from ages two up to, up to about even 18 or 19, but the bulk of the treatment really happens better early on in the, in the child's life. I'll get to that in a few moments with the webinars. I talk to you about growth and development and how it all works together. But before that, I think it's important to lay some groundwork in reference to why are we so involved? Why is the dental profession particularly so involved? What is it about this? issue of sleep and breathing that's so critically important. Well, as the first slide says to you right there, an estimated nine out of 10 children suffer from some type of sleep disorder breathing problem. And if you look at these symptoms, you know, you can see ADHD, bedwetting, mouth breathing, restless sleep, nightmares, allergies, swollen adenoids, tonsils. I mean, it's, it's, these are symptoms that we see all the time. It's uncanny. The more I've gotten into Healthy Start, I look at children so much differently. And I come to find out that it almost seems like nine and a half out of every 10 children I see suffer with these symptoms. And these symptoms are things that we can treat, we can help diagnose, and help you as parents understand what it is about the Healthy Start program that can take these symptoms and just basically turn things around for these kids and help them live a more successful and beautiful life. There's been research on now for really nearly 50 years, as Kathy pointed out earlier about Dr. Bergerson. And so many of these conditions are completely related, you know, to sleep disordered breathing issues. And it's, it's, really, a, it's really something that means means so much to you as a parent out there tonight if you're listening. If you have a child that seems to be suffering when they sleep, they may be experiencing those, these other symptoms and many others in addition. But what I'm coming with you tonight is, coming to you tonight with, is an idea, a, a, a diagnosis and a treatment plan to help solve these problems. Sleep Disordered Breathing, SDB. Now, in society today, the term sleep apnea has been thrown around quite a lot. You'll hear it in the news. You'll read it in the paper. You'll see it online. You'll see a lot of information about sleep apnea, and it's all directed toward adults because those are the people that can be diagnosed properly by our sleep physicians and partner with some of our dental offices who are also involved in it. But with children, we're not really calling it sleep apnea, we're not, and it's not important to even label it as sleep apnea because what we're doing is we're observing a condition. And that condition is sleep disordered breathing. We're not going out and saying, oh, well, you think a child has apnea. No, 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 no. We just want to recognize, are these kids getting the right amount of air, the right amount of oxygen, and sleeping through the proper cycles of sleep? And I'll explain a little bit of that later as we move through this evening. Now, if in fact, you have a child with these symptoms, you say to yourself, okay, what's the first thing I do? Of course, the first thing you do would be to go to a pediatrician. Unfortunately, these are the options that the pediatrician will often give you. Prescription drugs, counseling, therapy, surgery, tutoring, sleep aids, allergy testing, sleep studies, all sorts of things that in fact never identify the root cause of this problem. They really only look at the symptoms. If you have an issue with ADHD, let's talk about taking some medicine. If you have an issue with bedwetting, guess what? They'll grow out of it. That's so totally wrong. Now, I'm not here this evening to make any kind of negative comments about the medical pediatric folks. I think they're wonderful. My children grew up, always went great pediatricians. They were fantastic. But believe me when I tell you this, believe me this, there are things in their 
diagnosis and in their treatment planning that just aren't correct. Because in fact, all they're doing is addressing symptoms, not the cause. They are short-term band-aids. Many times these things can be painful, they can be costly, and the biggest thing is they don't work, okay? It's simple. I have friends that are physicians. I've chatted with them about this issue in terms of sleep disorder breathing, and they're, they're, they're kind enough and, and, and have enough savvy to look at me and say, Dr. D, I really don't know that much about sleep disordered breathing. Guess what? We do. Dentistry can help. We have the tools. We have the knowledge. We have the training. The Healthy Start program, we take these lectures out into the community and reach out to the dental profession and say, listen, here's what you can do to help. Think about it. If you're talking about an airway, what's the first thing you have to look at to get an air, to look at in the airway is somebody's mouth, the arrangement of their face, the arrangement of their teeth and gums and arches and how their tongue is positioned, how they breathe through their nose. That's the kind of stuff that we as dentists look at every single day. That's right in what I call our wheelhouse. That's the spot. We can do it. We know how to help. We have a dental solution for your child's medical problem. And by doing so, by instituting the therapies and treatments that Dr. Bergerson has patented and and lectured on so many years, we're able to impact the growth and development of your child, which will in turn improve their airway. It's an incredible thing. It's it's, It's almost magical. But it works. I see it day after day in my practice. I'll, ho- I'll, I'll try not to tell too many stories this evening of, of success that I've had with the kids that I treat. But honestly, it, it's so compelling. It's so almost bringing to tears some of the things that I've seen happen to help these children develop and grow properly. Dentists are more than just cavity fixers and straight teeth people and gum therapy fixers and whatever you want to say that. To me, a dentist is an oral physician. It's plain and simple. The dental community has grown. When I think of when I started dentistry in 1979 and where I am today, it's almost unrecognizable for me. You're sure. I still do the nuts and bolts dentistry, but so many other things I'm involved in and so many of those things, I think, come under the umbrella of being an oral physician. We are all about helping your child have a better future. Okay, so let's look at these pictures together. We have a young man here on the right and a pretty young lady on the left. My question to you tonight, are these in fact healthy children? They both look kind of sad, don't they? They kind of break my heart, frankly, when I look at them. But you sort of see these dark circles under this young man's eyes and hers are the same. And when I look at these pictures, the first thing I think of is, these are some sleepy kids. They're just not getting enough rest. And they're not getting the proper rest. That's going to be a key point as I move through this evening, this webinar. The the correct amount of sleep and the correct cycles of sleep each and every night. These children aren't healthy. And when you see children like this, who look tired all the time, and who look sad, and might even be a little grumpy, I want you to think now, maybe they're not getting enough sleep and maybe they're not getting the right kind of sleep. Here's another example. We say, are these healthy children? Well, maybe these aren't as graphic as these two young kids, but what I want you to pay attention to tonight with these two wonderful young ladies is basically the position of their lower jaw relative to their total profile. What's that mean? Is that dental mumbo jumbo? No, 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 no. Here, follow me now. Tip of the forehead tip of the nose, tip of the chin. If we trace a line, it's got a very significant curve, very significant. We come over here, we see forehead, nose, chin. Very, very significant curve, particularly as you go from the tip of the nose down to the chin. This area has what we call retruded, or better yet, it hasn't really grown properly because the lower jaw should, in fact, fit into the curve that's a little flatter. So it should be forehead, nose, chin. Should be out here. Same way over here with this young lady. Forehead, sorry, my pointer's not working. Forehead, nose, her chin should be out here somewhere. Notice how her lower lip is rolled a little bit. You say, okay, okay, Dr. D, you're getting into all this you know, facial anatomy. What's that mean to me as a parent? 
But what that can mean to you as a parent is if you see children and or yours and or your nephews, nieces, grandchildren, whoever it may be, if in fact their lower jaw is in a retruded or pushed back position, that could be a sign that they're not getting the proper amount of air when they sleep. You think, hmm, how, how are you going to piece that together? I'll show you in a minute with some x-ray pictures. But nevertheless, this is something I want you to kind of tune into a little bit to get a better understanding of who, what, where, and why. Okay, and some time together here tonight. Probably would be good ideas to try to get an idea, you know, get a sense of what are the causes. All right, if I'm talking to you about treating the root cause to solve the problem, which to me is that's the perfect way to do something when you're trying to help, let's find out what are some of these causes so that we can have a much better awareness. When you breathe through your mouth, we call it the mandible or lower jaw, causes the tongue to displace backward. Now I have a picture in a minute with an x-ray. Once the tongue gets pushed backward as the mouth pops open, it does squeeze off the airway a bit. If you happen to be a thumb sucker or a finger sucker, that destroys the normal position of the tongue and in turn inhibits proper swallowing, in turn inhibits it's proper growth in turn causes the arches to be constricted, meaning that the, the roundness of where your teeth set in bone, instead of being a nice big round curve, they kind of get squished together. Imagine with that, if you have a thumb in your mouth and you pop it in there and you start sucking on it hard, what happens to your cheeks? They push in from the side and they, what we call, constrict the arch. And that's our next point upper arch constriction, causing the roof of your mouth to go up higher, that decreases your chance for good nasal breathing. Now, when all this is kind of happening with reduced airway, poor nasal breathing, da 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 it reduces REM sleep. This has a direct effect on the reparative functions in your brain, the development of your hormone and endocrine systems, and your immune system. It has an incredibly wide-ranging effect. Believe me when I tell you this. The science and the research out there today is looking at so many things that are related to not sleeping properly, not getting the correct amount of oxygen. Things like obesity and high blood pressure in children are now being kind of investigated. Could they be related to sleep issues? Taking it one step further, this whole scenario of problems can lead to all kinds of behavioral, social, and lack of proper development for our children. All right. This slide, this slide says normal craniofacial growth. Don't get thrown off by the wordage. Cranio means head, facial means your face. What we're talking about is when a head and face grows, how should it look? Well, this is from ages two to 12. You start out as a two-year-old. You can see how large the top of your skull really is even at age two, but the lower part of your face has a lot to develop. What we do see if, it, if the, if the um, development occurs properly, by the age of two, about 55% of this growth is happening. Age of four, about 75. Age of 12, about 90%. Differs a little for girls and boys, but nevertheless, note too, if you look here at the, this one outline, I know it's not real simple to see, but if you have the tip of the nose comes here, by the time a person gets to be nearly 17, it's clear out here. If the tip of the chin is back here at age two, take a look what happens with this stepwise process of proper growth and development. What did I say back before? The lower jaw should grow down and forward. So that look at the profile now, tip of the forehead, tip of the nose, tip of the chin, relatively flat, right? That would be the normal growth pattern. That's what we should see. Now, as I mentioned, it goes down and forward. So then we have to say to ourselves, okay, the, the picture I showed you of the two little girls who had the, 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 man, the lower jaw that was seen to be pushed back, why? Why is that happening? Why do we see more and more children who don't have this proper growth? Now, a good colleague, Dr. Robert, Dr. Robert, some of this might have to do with the dietary consistency. What's that mean? The stuff you eat. Is it roughage? Is it good stuff you have to chew? Or is it, in fact, just little melt-away tablets and, and, and um, stuff that just instantly melts without any kind of chewing necessary? Well, if you, I know we can't spin back the hands of time 400 years, maybe even earlier. Early man, when they would chew food, they would eat all kinds of stuff, roots and sticks and who knows what. And so our jaws, in order to develop properly, and the position of our teeth and the strength of our jaws in our face has a lot to do with the consistency of the food you eat. 
we see today in a processed food type diet, there becomes an, a, a tremendous increase in an underdeveloped upper and lower jaw. This causes what we call in dentistry a malocclusion. That just means everything doesn't fit together properly. When the patient closes their teeth together, their teeth don't meet correctly and their jaws don't line up. And Dr. Kuricini with his studies came up with the uh, conclusions that processed food was a major impact on that. So then you trace back through time about when processed food entered into our diet, you go back about three or four generations, you began to see it creep into the diet and you began to see these issues where malocclusion was occurring, meaning things weren't fitting together. In the first generation, nearly 50% of, of the rate of change occurred in, in malocclusion, 70% in the second, 85% in the third generation. What does that mean to me as an oral physician? That means it's just about every kid I'm looking at every day has some kind of messed up teeth. <laughs> the things don't fit together, all right? And whether that's the shape of their jaw, the shape of their face, their lower jaw being pushed back, just growth and development just didn't happen in the proper manner. Now, at the top of the, what we into in our course in Healthy Start, where we show how we can help generate proper growth and development strictly by using patented devices that kids wear when they go to bed and sometimes during the day. Okay, we'll go back to, you know, we, we came back here and said that, uh, when we go here, uh, dietary consistency, processed foods, things like that. We wanna go forward another step though and say, some other problems do occur when infants are growing that are related to the use of a pacifier or the use of bottle fed type uh, apparatus. Now, a pacifier, it's just not a good thing. <laughs> I'm real sorry. I, I, I think that the pacifier is for the adults, for the mom and dad, more than it is for the child. And I get it. My wife and I have three kids. I get it. I've been in that grocery store line and all three of them are screaming. It's tough. And you really just want to reach down, grab that pacifier, pop it in there and say, okay, quiet. And so I get it. It's, it, it, is, it does make sense. But I'm here to explain to you this evening that it causes improper formation of the jaws, teeth, and the positions, and how the kids breathe. In addition to that, if it's a prolonged thing of using the bottle with a nipple on it, that also does not allow for proper tongue position. It causes improper development of the dental arches, and you'll see in a minute how that has an impact, a huge impact on breathing and getting the correct amount of oxygen. Here we see now they have these little things called puffs, nutritious snacks melt in your mouth. I'm not here to tell you, you know, start feeding your children raw vegetables when they're an infant. No way. But when they start getting some teeth to pop through, these guys come in the front here first. There's a couple little rascals that'll come in the back too. It's not a bad idea to give them something to gnaw on a little bit to strengthen the teeth and the positions and get everything right. Just keep that in mind. Now here we might have a slide of what could be termed a perfect five-year-old as far as their teeth and jaws and the shape. You'll notice that the jaw and the, and the position is very wide and very round. you also notice we have space in between every single tooth. Now when moms and dads come into my office and they say, oh, you know, Megan's got perfect teeth, look, and she's only five years old or four years old. And I look in there and every single tooth is pushed together, perfect in alignment, but no space, none at all. I look at that and I go, oh no, we're in trouble here, you know? Why? Think about it for a second. The size of this baby tooth versus the size of the new adult tooth that's developing up here in the bone. When it comes down into position, it's going to be one and a half times the width of this tooth. So think if there's no space here, no space here, none across the whole arch, what do you think is going to happen? I hope you guessed it. Totally crowded teeth. Totally crowded. Everything is going to be bunched up. And there's going to be problems. We can help. I said I would, I would give you an illustration of an airway and try to help you learn or at least understand a little bit more about how that airway could be blocked off by, for instance, mouth breathing. So before we go into what would occur there, let's talk about just normal structures. Here we have the nose, okay, a little side view of the teeth, or side view of the head rather. Here's the teeth where they meet together. Here's your tongue, okay? There's the tip of the chin here and then the chin bone back there, tip of the nose, nasal bone. You breathe through here, the air goes through what we call nasal turbinates, which are just a whole bunch of filters to clean out the air, and then zoom, it goes flying down the air tube. We want this air tube to be as wide as possible. 
as wide as possible. Now, I'll show you an x-ray picture to even illustrate it better, but let's just do it on our own. Let's take this particular patient and we'll ask them to lay down on their back when most likely. Kids usually start off sleeping on their back and then their mouth drops open. Boom. Well, when this part of the mouth drops open, the chin drops back. When the chin drops back because the tongue is attached, it goes back. So for every millimeter that the mouth opens in the front, you get a loss of twice as much width of airway. So if you open up a millimeter here in the front, you lose two millimeters here in the back. Well, if this is only seven millimeters to start with, or maybe even a little less for real little kids, as that tongue goes back, as the jaw protrudes, zoop, squeezed off, okay? Squeezed off, not good. The studies that we see in, in, in the different uh, areas of how your dental arches are supposed to grow, um, the arch expansion improves in patients with upper and lower jaw constriction, meaning that you get poor air development if these jaws are constricted. What does that mean to you? Here's what it really means. If you look into a child's mouth, if you look in your own mouth, if the pattern of your teeth is almost in a sort of V shape, that's called constricted. We want everything to be big and round all the way around, all the way around down here, here. If in fact this upper and lower jaw, let's pretend that this person was sucking their thumb. In doing that, it creates tremendous suction force and the jaws on arches on both sides will pull in. And as they pull in, it starts to cut off the ability to get proper air. Very important. I, saw, I told you I'd have an x-ray picture and here we go. This is a cross section where we are looking very similar to this drawing, but with an x-ray picture because it illustrates it even better. Here's the normal airway, normal position. There's the nose, teeth. Breathe through here, there's the air tube right there, nice and wide. This patient then opens their jaw and sleeps, and their jaw falls back. The tongue position moves. Look what happens over here. Uh-oh. Oh, my heavens. It goes from about seven millimeters down to one. Sometimes I see these pictures in my office, and I just turn and look at the patient. How are you breathing? Okay. Now, remember, this is a flat picture of a three-dimensional object, but either way, the airway, you can see that it's restricted. It's compressed. No. Way back in the beginning, we had that picture of the two girls. Both of them had the lower jaw that was somewhat pushed back or retruded, as we call it. All right, here's an example. Remember what I said, that, that curvature should be relatively flat. Here's a really nice jaw position down here. We bump to the next slide, look at this one. I think everybody can see the illustration. Tip of the nose, whoop, a big curve goes back. Where would we really like that chin? Out here, all right, out here. Look at hers, perfect, retreated. Think about it again. Remember the picture I showed you where if the jaw or the, the lower jaw is down and back, the airway right here gets restricted or occluded, making it more difficult. If you see a child sitting like this or laying down like this, whether it's in a car seat or at home or anything like that, and you see their mouth gaped open like this, now that I've, I've shown you these pictures, what do we imagine her airway looks like? And do you think maybe while she's breathing, she's making noise? She might even be gasping. She might be snoring. I always tell my parents when they come in, they, we talk about Healthy Start, and I talk to them about how, the sleep, how the kids are sleeping. I say, here's what I want you to do. Put your child to bed, close the door, wait 45 minutes to an hour, go back in the room quietly and just sit and observe. I know we don't really do, I, I, don't, I never did that when I was, my kids were younger. I didn't. I wish I did. But of course, way back then, I didn't know anything about Healthy Start. Um, but now I do. So now I tell my parents, go in the room, sit down, just listen. Look for three things. This is what I'll ask you to do if you have kids at home and you're listening tonight. You look for three things breathing through their mouth, clenching their teeth or grinding their teeth, and snoring. Those three things right there. The children should not do any of those things when they sleep. They should not. They shouldn't grind their teeth. They shouldn't breathe through their mouth, and they shouldn't snore. If they do any of those three things, I'm going to urge you right now, find a dental professional in your area that's a healthy start provider. Your child needs help, okay? Just promise me you'll do that. You'll go out, you'll go tonight, or whenever you have the chance for your grandmother, aunt, aunt or uncle, or just a friend. Observe your child sleeping so you can find out if they're doing those things. Now, 
this next picture was a young boy in a car seat and just want you to listen and observe. Listen to this mother describe her baby's sleep disorder breathing. Now watch what happens when she's able to open the airway by simply shifting the position of his jaw. Now watch what happens. Take his jaw and just bring it forward. I can't. Young Eli was really distressed when his mouth was wide open and he was trying to breathe through his mouth. He was gasping, he was snoring, and mom reached in and just by gently pulling forward on his lower jaw, think about the x-ray picture I showed you, opens that airway and suddenly he's breathing through that beautiful nose. Once you start the nasal breathing process, everything starts to get better, okay? Because better purified oxygen is getting to your child while they're sleeping. When we talk about the width of that airway, we certainly want it to be wide enough for kids to breathe. So what I always talk about is, let's have kids breathing through a garden hose width versus a little coffee stir. Sometimes when the kids come in and we talk about it, I'll hand mom or dad one of these little coffee straws and I'll say, okay, suck in as hard as you can and now try to see if you can breathe for 15 seconds through that straw. They can't do it. They can't, literally can't do it. They just start to gasp, they start to choke, they're unable to get enough air. So, so take that a step further with your beautiful child and they're not breathing properly. They're not getting the correct amount of oxygen. That's a problem. So let's sort of summarize here with this little flow chart about the issues of a, a, a uh, jaw position, tongue position, and a restricted uh, airway, what that can then do. So up here, we're talking about somebody extended bottle feeding, passive use, poor swallowing, processed foods, thumb sucker, all these things together just sort of add up to what are called underdeveloped dental arches and jaws. And remember, just to go back, the arch is nothing more than the position of the teeth as they're set in the jaw. And I mentioned that I want to see that a big, nice round curve. And I want to see it boxed off. And I want to see it constricted. I want to see nice big curve. Now, however, if these things have occurred, this occurs, then what happens next? You end up with a compromised airway. So what happens when a child has a compromised airway? Well, they do the big three that I talked about, mouth breathing, grinding, snoring. They lose some other stuff too. Their tongue's not in the right position. They sometimes try to push it forward. Many times they have what we call an overjet, which just means that their upper teeth are sticking out over their lower teeth. You can even have an open bite. I have children that have been thumb suckers for years and years. They pull their thumb out of their mouth and you can almost see a space. They have an open bite. Their thumb can fit straight into that little spot where they minimize their weight. When that happens, guess what happens next? Sleep disordered breathing. And when that happens, look at the series of things that we had. And this isn't even, this is just a, a small list of stuff. We tried to come up with the things that would really be more, um, would, would help parents pay more attention because we feel like these are things that happen to kids all the time. And we hope that you will in fact seek out a Healthy Start provider. Go on the website, thehealthystart.com. Type in your zip code. If a provider pops up and you have a child with any of these symptoms, any of these symptoms, call. If you can't find anybody there, call Healthy Start. Get back to it and go from it, okay? A dentist is qualified, trained, and ready to help fix sleep disorder breathing problems in children. So I want you to, I'm urging you to reach out, reach out to your oral physicians in your area and see if you can get help. Here's how it kind of works. All over the world, we've had dentists have come on board Healthy Start program. Over three and a half million children have been treated all over the world. Unfortunately, I will say to you this evening that the United States is a little slow out of the gate, folks. Okay, we're just kind of getting, we're just getting off the launching pad with this. That's another reason why I'm here talking to you tonight, because I want to make sure that you understand what Healthy Start can do. But you can see that it's been a proven treatment, highly successful all over the world. As more and more dentists come on board as certified providers, you'll see it happen too. 
what do we actually do with these appliances? It's a small mouth guard that the kids wear. And when they, when they wear that mouth guard, it actually contributes to those dental arches expanding. Remember, I said I wanted that big curve. This little appliance actually pushes things out of the way. As the kids wear them, they also begin to get used to keeping their lips closed and breathing through their nose because the nasal breathing whole complex allows for more purified and better oxygen to get to their lungs. You'll pr it will then um, start to change the cycles of sleep, which I'll get to in a second. The appliance also does train the tongue. It conditions it, it strengthens it, it puts it in the right spot, and in fact, it allows kids to swallow properly. That's a huge issue. A lot of times kids have speech problems and so much of it is related to their tongue. It's not in the right spot. So speech therapists try to teach the children how to swallow properly. It's not that easy to teach a child to do that. And in fact, during the daytime, you probably only swallow, uh, you probably swallow eight or seven or 800 times a day during the daytime. And, and you really, in, with um, functional therapy, with the training of the tongue position, um, it's a good thing to do, no question. But you're only going to probably get about a third of the daytime swallows. At night, you swallowed like two few swallowing properly. It really helps out. We eliminate these habits. I tell parents, I'm not going to stop the habit of thumb sucking. What I'm going to do is replace it. I'm going to give your child an appliance to wear in their mouth so that every time they think about sucking their thumb, they pop their appliance in. Changes the whole picture. Changes everything. Helps them so much. When we use these healthy start appliances, let's go back to that tracing I had several slides ago, but the growth of the, the face, how it grows, the jaw should grow down and forward. Where we promote that, we actually stimulate growth down and forward of the lower jaw. This will increase the airway and oftentimes correct so many of these symptoms that are associated with it. It also encourages the proper growth of your body and your head and face. Whenever I have kids come to the office for a consult, we have a little game that we always play that, that the staff always say to me, okay, Dr. D, how old is this little kid? Now, they don't tell me the age until I walk in the room and I ask the child their birthday. And I'll say, hey, you know, Billy, how old are you today? You know, and every single time, I, I'm wrong. I guess too young. I had one today. I saw a little girl today. I looked at her and I thought, okay, come on now. How old is this little? She was so pretty, but she sure needed some sleep. I could tell by looking at her. But anyway, I guess she was six. She was eight and a half. Eight and a half. Because you see, if you're not getting the correct amount of sleep with REM and the proper oxygen, the cycles aren't doing what they're supposed to, your body does not grow and develop properly. Your immune system, your endocrine system, and your other glands get shut down and they don't work right. By doing this also, using the Healthy Start program, we find out a remarkable thing. If the kids follow through with the program all the way until they're age 12 or 13, 93% of them have straight teeth. We get everything in the right spots. Now, does that mean that they don't ever need braces? I can't give you that guarantee but 93% reduce the chance for a whole lot of orthodontic treatment later. All right. I think everybody can develop on the, or can uh, understand and, and explain a little bit about the young guy in the left-hand picture. He's nine years of age. Take a look at the lower jaw. Where's his chin? Relative to the forehead, nose, here it is. Way back there, right? We know we want it out here somewhere. We have this young man wearing the Healthy Start appliance. We trace him all through the years. By the time he gets to be 14, look at that. Excellent positioning. We take a look at his airway before. And we look at it after. Now, this one isn't quite as constricted as the one I had for you several slides back, but it's still only about three millimeters. Here we have it about seven and a half, right to there, from there to there. Tremendous difference. Here's the look at the chin, retruded. Look at it now, out near the profile, okay, near where it's supposed to be. Here we see a beautiful, beautiful picture of what Michael started at, all right, where he was here, remember age nine, and here he is now. Take a look at those teeth. Now, here's something I want you to really identify. I want you to tune into this. Take a look at the distance between this part of his tooth here and his jaw relation. And how is, remember the arch I talked about. Here's this one. Look at the width from here over to here. Now let's go here. Here. Oh my gosh. Clear over there. That's got to be a five millimeter increase. Now, a little bit of growth happened, no question, but the appliance, this Healthy Start appliance, encourages better growth, wider growth. I think when you look at him, you can notice that his lower jaw is not developed as it should be. Now, it's right on the money, okay?
good job. Here we have another patient who's 12 months in the Healthy Start program. And we see that this patient is, was uh, brought on board a little bit later in the game. You'll notice fairly a, a good, almost all permanent teeth are in position. But even so, take a look at the width of the jaw or the upper jaw from here to here. Go over to here. Boom, boom, much wider. On the lower jaw, it's really easy to notice width from here to here. And now here to here. Here, his tongue couldn't even fit into the slide because he couldn't get it forward without a problem. His tongue now fits just right in there where it's supposed to because the Healthy Start appliance helped advance the lower jaw down and forward, allowing for the proper growth. That's the proper growth. That's the way it should be. Okay? All right. Now, boy, the dreaded ADD, ADHD. So many families are affected by this issue. You look at these pictures and you see this could be your child, right? Rambunctious, throwing things in class, misbehaving, tired all the time, wandering off, doesn't know what to do, and what do they then do? Take medications. Statistics and research today show us that 43% of the children diagnosed and being treated with ADHD and ADD have a sleep problem, not a psychiatric or psychological problem. And incredible as it may seem, many of the symptoms that are associated with ADHD and ADD are pretty much the same symptoms that you see with sleep disordered breathing. Our great care colleague, Dr. Karen Bonick, did a fabulous survey and study, I should say, with 11,000 kids. That's a huge study, folks. And she was able to establish over a period of time that sleep disordered breathing increases the risk of the dreaded ADHD by at least 50%. I, I saw some of her recent work, and she's now thinking it's closer to 60%. So you really have to understand, what does that mean to you as a parent? If you have a child that has suffering, it is suffering from some of these symptoms, or even being treated, please seek out a dental professional that knows and is certified to help with Healthy Start. I'm not saying you're going to have your child completely cured or come off meds immediately, but I will tell you, my experience has been that I've been able to have at least 50% of the kids I've treated have now begun to come off their medications or off them completely, and they're changed people. They're changed young individuals. This is what they, Wednesday, no, this is Tuesday. Last Wednesday, a week ago, I had a young guy in my office. I started treating him. He was 11 and a half, an ADD, ADHD kid on medications, got him wearing the appliance, even just a week, his dad's already telling me he's acting so much better and so much different. He's starting to be focused in a short period of time. I can't wait to see this young guy in about a month. Should be dramatic. Now, here's one that I always come up, you know, we talk about that I think, I think is incredibly appropriate. How do I know that? Almost, I mean, every week I have children in my office, mom and dad coming in for a consult because their child's a bedwetter. Difficult subject to talk about. Very difficult to talk about with, every, you know, parents don't talk about this with other parents. Kids don't, everybody's embarrassed. Turns out that the lack of proper sleep and proper oxygen does not allow for the proper cycling of sleep to go into what we call REM sleep. And that's the critical phase of sleep for children. It's important for adults too, don't get me wrong. But kids need probably four to four and a half hours of REM sleep per night, meaning that as they cycle through the natural cycles of sleep, they should go into REM, which allows for reparative things to occur in the brain and allows for a marriage and development of all, all the systems in your body. When we wake up in the morning, when our feet hit the floor, the first thing we think about is, hey, I better go to the bathroom. Well, guess what? When your system doesn't grow properly and develop properly, you don't really think that. In fact, when you try to wake up in the morning, you're so tired and sleepy, you can't even get up. And most times through the night, children have problems with bladder control. It causes a lot of trouble. But I'm telling you, as, as I'm sitting here talking to you this evening, every, every child that I've worked with with bedwetting, if they wear the appliance and keep it in all night, night after night, sometimes we see results within two or three days that bedwetting stops. It's so dramatic. It's something I really want you to pay attention to. Just a couple quick stu case studies as we wind down the evening here, just a few more minutes. We have a little girl at age five. Take a look at her lower jaw. Where is it? Push back too far. We put her in the appliances. We, here she was in a cross section, or excuse me, a uh, side shot of her teeth and how they, you can tell that she probably was sucking her thumb. Her teeth are pushed out as, in, as they should be back in. Now look at her here. This is, of course, seven years later, but take a look at the difference just in two years. Look at her chin position. Everything there looking great. 
here we see another fella who we caught him a little late in the game, but no problem. We were still able to help with the proper development. Take a look at his tooth position and took it and take a look now. These are all examples of helping these children grow and develop properly. Eight-year-old guy, here he is at 14, didn't really want to look at the camera, <laughs> just had to sort of look up. But here, here you can really see a great illustration of the, of the photograph of his mouth. Take a look at where his teeth were, a wide gap, what we call an overjet and a deep bite. Look at the width of his arches, very constricted. Now look here. At a, only a year later, folks, only a year later, you see a dramatic difference in the way he looks. Really incredible stuff. We change lives every single day using the Healthy Start program. And I would ask you to please pay attention to your children as they sleep or your grandchildren, nieces and nephews, friends, and anybody like that. If you see someone that you know whose child looks tired and, and has trouble in school and isn't developing properly, maybe too small, at least consider that it might have something to do with their sleep.